السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه مباركا عليه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى جل جلاله وعم نواله والصلاة والسلام على سيد الحبيب المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أبي مجد قرم هنا أبي ترى قرم هنا أكثر وجائي قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد ولقد أرسلنا رسلا من قبلك وجعلنا لهم أزواجا وذرية صدق الله العظيم So my dear brothers and dear sisters and dear friends and dear elders and we have children here as well so now my job is very difficult because I have to speak to elders, middle age, and children. Uh, that's tough. Unless I ignore somebody. You can't ignore anyone. What I want to speak about is relationships. Relationships. I'll speak about this uh, regarding marriage, but what I say, inshallah, the it can apply to any relationship, business relationships, neighbor relationships, and any relationship. So inshallah, this should be relevant for those who are looking to get married, and for those who are married already, and for those who are veterans in marriage. Do we have any veterans in, in marriage here? Any veterans in marriage? Married for over 30, 40 years? Okay. Oh, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Jab me phir harkat hoti hai. Then you get noise. We got a king up. Yahara king at the year Harkatogi is man. I've done this before, it's the best place is here. This is disturbing this one. Then put this one here. Okay. Oh. You can stick this here somehow. Is that fine? Microphones and masjids. In kiapas me banti nahi Any masjid you go to, it's very difficult. Always there's some issue. Allah san kare. Alhamdulillah. So, I want to ask a question that we need to prepare for marriage. How does one prepare for marriage? Preparation for marriage is that jab tariq fix ho jati hai, to phir har weekend shopping ka weekend ho jata hai. Itna hi kaam padta hai. That's why the best marriage is when you have the shortest time in between. Jalli jalli get tayari kar lo. Nikakallo, let them go on their way. Otherwise, you prepare. So, the focus on preparation for marriage is on the day, the two days maybe, Nikah day, Walima day, maybe one or two days, 
हनी मोनगर हो तो उसका how many people you're going to invite what food are you going to give them what gifts are you going to take ye sara preparation mein lag jata hai right that's preparation for marriage i wrote a book on marriage called handbook of a healthy muslim marriage and i told i i before i published i sent it to 20 different people to read i want you to read this and then give me feedback critical feedback majority of the 20 people were women why did i send it to women because i wanted it to be relevant to women i'm not a woman never been a woman and never will be a woman so i don't know what it means to be a woman theek hai na so i need the women's input so i sent it to multiple women took the feedback took what i thought was good so then if you publish your book without nobody reading it and then they start telling you this here is me here is me ye keh sakte the wo keh sakte the you understand best to let people criticize it first take what's good and leave the rest and bismillah somebody he said you haven't mentioned anything about pre marital counseling pre marital counseling maine kaha ke there's not enough counselors for after marriage counseling and you want pre marital counseling lekin he had some he's got a point so i included a bit but what i'm going to share now aap mein se baaz logon ne kitab padhi hogi right what i'm going to share now is not in the kitab this is special content for free This is about how to really prepare for marriage. Although this is about how to prepare for marriage, the people who are already married, they should find this relevant. And this is something that will apply to any relationship. So as I said, when people prepare for marriage, yani shaadi ki jo taiyari, it's all focused on the day. Lekin after the 2 3 days are over when the husband and wife start living together, when the real marriage starts the honeymoon period is over are you prepared for that were you prepared for that have you prepared for your children for that i'm saying to the veterans of marriage if you have younger children or brothers or sisters or cousins who are uh, should be getting married have you prepared them for this Why should you prepare? We never prepared in history. Ye kahan se baat aayi? Because historically speaking about 40 50 years ago the job the 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 role of a husband and wife was clear. And that role was the same for centuries. The husband was going to do the work whether in the field or business or whatever. The wife she didn't have too many things to think about. she only had to think that where am i going to live lekin mujhe wahan ja ke kuch pakana hai aur saaf karna hai and have children and that was a job there was no occupation maybe i need to help in the shop or field but there was no uh, women didn't have occupations they didn't have any degrees there was no concept of that as a tiny and still now in many cultures is not there but we're living in bangalore as well you know there there's women in universities and jobs and occupations and so on so now you have to prepare because there's a lot more complications involved a relevant que- this question to the wife that would you like to work after marriage would be irrelevant 50 years ago and for centuries do you think ever expect anybody to ask that beaucoup hoga na right It was clear what she was going to do. But now you better ask that question otherwise it's going to be surprising. If a uh, professional, you have to ask that question. You have to ask questions, are you going to travel? Will your company send you to X Y and Z place? If you want to stay at home, well that if that's relevant to you. Can you see how it's all changed now? 
That's why preparation is very important. So in my book, I have about 50 questions that you can ask. Don't ask all of them. One, two, three, like interview jaisa. What you do is you just read through and think which relevant to you, main ones, and then you just ask those casually. Barhal, right? how do you prepare for marriage? So the way to prepare for marriage is uh, firstly we have to understand what marriage is about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that uh, women are married for usually four reasons. He's talking to men, so he's saying men usually look for four reasons four characteristics in a woman for marriage. One is wealth, beauty, her family lineage, how good the family is, hasab nasab as they say. And number four is the deen. There's many more, but these are the main ones. Nowadays, you also look for what degree she has. In another country, another subcontinent country, there are multitudes of females who have become medical doctors not to work just to get a rishta they go through whole of medicine and then they're just waiting for somebody to marry them they don't want to be a doctor because unfortunately this is their culture doctor ke bagir, you know I won't get that kind of a right? so this is all cultural issues so How do you prepare for marriage? So what we have to do today, uh, we're going to do this together inshallah. We have to determine, right? What is the most important factors that destroy marriages? And do I have that factor inside me? The Prophet ﷺ said, wealth, hasab nasab, beauty, and deen. So, uh, these things, the Prophet ﷺ said, make sure you are successful with the deen. But he didn't say that, ignore the others. So if you get the deen plus the others, mashallah, nurun ala nur. However, if you focus just on beauty, then it's a problem because marriage is not about looking. Only a bit of it is looking. It's, necess- it's part of it. You have to be attractive. Attracted. But if you want to get the best model in town, what are you going to do with her? I'm talking to the men. What are you going to do with her? Take her, put her in your front room on a stage and just watch her all day. Because beauty is the most important. That's what you're going to do? Is that marriage? No, that's not marriage. But it's good to have somebody that you're attracted to. Number two, family lineage. It's good to have somebody of good family lineage because that means they have good genes. Inshallah, that will transfer to your children. If somebody is good, then the extended family will have good akhlaq, inshallah. They won't come and try to beat you up anytime little thing happens. One of the, you have to be very careful which family you get married into because if a small garbar happens, then they'll come and beat you up. What's the point of that? Okay, what about wealth? Is that uh, important? Well, wealth is a good thing because you might get some help if you need to buy a house. Maybe your in-laws will help you. Nothing wrong with that. But that can't be your exclusive reason because you're not marrying money. Money won't answer all of your questions. It answers many questions but not all of your questions. Um, One of the benefits of money is that your children will eventually get a good inheritance from the mother's side as well. So there's nothing wrong with it. There's benefits in it as well, but it can't be your exclusive reason. Right? If somebody gets all four, alhamdulillah. If you get three, very good. If you get two, then it's still good. And if you get the deen, then alhamdulillah, that you got, you got everything. So now the other thing is, what about women? The Prophet ﷺ was speaking to men. That's why he discussed the characteristics of women. 
women also look for certain things nowadays. What are the main characteristics that they should look for in men? Well, all of these things apply. The deen, of course. I think in a man, it should be stability. Is he savvy enough in the world to be able to live a, live, uh, uh, earn a living and uh, support his family? That's very important, isn't it? These are characteristics. And good family, good looking, attractive, and so on and so forth. Now I'm just going to divert a, a small while. You know, we talked about beauty. What exactly is beauty? Can anybody here define beauty for me, please? Because this is something we deal with all the time, right? So how do you define beauty? No, that's just, uh, that's just that some beauty is skin deep. That's if it's physical beauty is skin deep. But akhlaq beauty is not skin deep, right? I want a definition of beauty. A character is where beauty uh, is manifested. But I'm asking for definition of beauty. This is a philosophical question you didn't expect. How about Some people get attracted to. That's what happens with beauty. But it still doesn't... Uh, I want a proper definition. <laughs> yes, some beauty is subjective. I agree. Some beauty is subjective. But there's also an international understanding of Balance. Beauty is balance. Remember this. Beauty is balance. Proportion. Equilibrium. Etidal in everything. Nothing is too big, too small. For example, they have studied faces in many cultures of the world. And a certain proportionate face in multiple cultures of the world was considered beautiful in all of them. Because there's a certain... There's a, there's a certain calculation of this lip has to be up uh, from the nose this far and etc. I don't want to bore you with all of that right now. The main thing we have to realize is beauty. Why does this masjid look beautiful? Do you consider this masjid? Well, I'll tell you my reason is because they've used the colors wisely. They've used white and a contrast with brown. And they've got a bit of green somewhere. And it's not too much. I've seen masjids where they'll have black and um, uh, sorry, brown and white, and the carpet will be red or something, and the ceiling will be a different color and like five colors. According to design, no more than three colors. Two matching colors and one for just touch up somewhere. So Alhamdulillah, it looks good. There's a reason behind everything. There's a reason behind everything. But it's balance. Why do certain phones, why do most people consider certain phones to be beautiful because they've got certain sleekness and balance compared to others. So that's what beauty is. It's balance. Now, uh, leave that for now. I'll bring that up later, inshallah. We need, how do you prepare for marriage? So we need to find out which are the characteristics that disturb marriages and harm marriages. So now, please tell me what characteristics give me one that disturbs marriages sorry I didn't hear that oh misunderstanding yeah definitely what else huh? oh no that's too complex for me huh? Listen, basic stuff, you guys are complex, man. Oh, yes, anger. Do you guys agree? Anger, right. Because complexity is difficult uh, because it just depends if... What's this problem in all of these masjids? Ladies aren't they on the same system? The other masjid is the same thing. Why is it on the same system? Yeah, look at the system. Okay. Mashallah, alhamdulillah. Can you ladies listen, uh, hear now? They can hear? How do you know?
So let's take anger, ghussa. This is one of the worst things in marriage. Do you guys agree? How do you know? Experience. So, for those brothers and sisters who are not yet married, what should you do? The way you prepare for marriage is you need to learn to control your anger. Otherwise, it's going to spoil your marriage. And those who are already married, they know this already. They need to learn to control their anger, otherwise their future is going to get worse. It doesn't get better. I'll tell you something. In the last one year or one and a half years, I've dealt with four or five marriages that are over 20 years old. They have children who are like 17 to 20 something. And it's a point of no return now. Why? Because they did not get help before. Or they were just told, Sabar karo, sabar karo, sabar karo. Right? That doesn't always work. You need to deal with the matter. Sabar ek hat tak hoti hai, sirf agar wo aurat ya mard agar wo wali ho, to phir wo aisa sabar karega ke maut tak karega. Otherwise, most people are not like that. Somebody needs to deal with it. So, for example, one woman used to call me uh, seven, eight years ago. We have issues. I said, look, you need to get some help. You need to do something. He said, no, no, I'm too scared. Okay. After one and a half, two years, another call. And it's worse now. But she's still not willing to get help. She thinks I can help. I can't. I don't have magic. You know, they call scholars thinking that hum koi aisa wazifa denge ke bas masla hal ho jayega. Aisa koi wazifa, I don't think, I, I don't have one. You have to take some hard decisions. You have to make changes. You have to get help. Otherwise, nothing changes. So, then she calls again after one and a half years. Jab, you know, when it gets too difficult, then she calls. And I said, look, you keep calling me. I've told you what you need to do. Now it's come to a point, after all of these years, they're not even sleeping in the same room. But she's still too scared to take action. Sometimes it's the other way around. It could be multiple ways. But what I'm saying is, if you have an anger problem, now, do you, how do you tell if you have an anger problem? Because most of us may have problems where we never recognize it. If you have an anger problem, the simple way to tell is just compare yourself to your brothers and sisters. Which one of you gets angry faster? You probably got a problem then. Or compare yourself to your friends. Do you get angry quickly? Then you need to learn to control it. How do you control it? I think I had an anger problem. I learned to control it by reading the verses in the Quran. Some of the hadith which discuss how to control anger. The Prophet ﷺ told Abu Dharr radiallahu an, because Abu Dharr radiallahu once had a little argument in a field with somebody and he got angry. So he sat down. It was muddy. He sat down. And then after that, he lay down. He said, what are you doing in the field, in the muddy field? Why are you lying down? So this is what the Prophet ﷺ told me. Because when you're standing up and you're angry, you're more likely to be more confrontational and do something. If you sit down, you kind of physically, it helps to calm you down. And if you lie down, it calms you down further. That's why they say that if you want to criticize someone, so don't ever say, you know, you find someone in the masjid, brother, I need to talk to you. They're standing outside and up and go, he's going to get defensive. What you do is sit him down. And they say the best is if you can lie him down. Then criticize him. Lie him down, taki wagera ke saad kuch khana ragdo, pir lagao. He'll be more receptive because you're less confrontational. This is the study. So, the other thing you can do is take an online anger management course. The main thing is you have to be sincere and genuine that I need my marriage to be improved. Otherwise, it's going to mess up and it's give an unstable relationship, unstable home, and the children have an imbalance because there's anger going on all the time. If I have a problem, let me get help. You don't have to tell anybody. Go and sign up yourself for an anger management course. 
So that was anger, right? I'm, I just, I mean, I can't tell you everything today, but it's just the way to think about this. Everybody can do this themselves. Okay, after anger, what's the next issue? What's another big issue? There's lots of issues, but another issue I will say is uh, sensitivity. Sensitivity and crying easily. And then breaking up. So, choti choti baat ho gayi, you know, somebody said misunderstanding, right? Somebody said misunderstanding. So, thori si misunderstanding ho gayi, thora sa, thori ghalati ho gayi, oversight, whatever. So, you start crying because you're very uh, sensitive. So, you start crying. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. There was one case I know of a woman, she got married to this family that had, uh, her husband was fine, uh, he didn't have a father, he had a mother and he had some brothers and sisters who were disabled. She was still fine, I don't mind, I'll do khidmat, I don't mind staying. They got married. And then after that the mother-in-law, whenever some little issue happens, she stops talking to her for two days. How can you live like that where somebody is not talking to you for two days? Deal with the matter and move on. One day my son, who was about seven at the time, seven years, he came back from school and uh, somebody must have, what about your friend? How old are you? Oh, you're 11. Okay. So, he said, I, I'm not talking to him. So he said, where did you learn that from? Because we don't have the habit that's a very lazy habit I'm just not going to talk to you deal with the matter and move on so he said where do you learn he must have learnt it from a friend so he said no you can't do that deal with the matter you're 11 right do you have anybody in your school that sometimes bothers you you do right what do you do with them do you beat them up no so what do you do a lot of them. Oh, you won't talk to them. That means you avoid them or you, you just don't talk to them? You just avoid them. I'll tell you one more thing you should do. Make dua for them. That, Ya Allah, I have to live with these guys for the next two, three, four years. Unke saath time guzarna hai. Ya Allah, make them good people and make me good person as well. Inshallah, Allah Ta'ala will help you. Because one is you can avoid them, but how long can you avoid them for? Make dua for them. If, it, if, they, if they become nice people, mashallah. You understand? You can do this for everyone. You can do this for everything. So now these people, so, some of these issues are more in men, and some of these issues are more in women. So if you have emotion, like you just get um, uh, ang uh, not angry, uh, sensitive quickly, and you stop talking to somebody, and then you start crying. I'll give some suggestion of how you can deal with this. What you do is start reading the Quran. Make a habit of reading the Quran with meaning. And you'll find as you go through, you'll find multiple things to reflect and cry on. And pour your emotions out in there. Otherwise, you'll be crying for free and nothing will happen. جب بھی آپ کو تھوڑی سی پریشانی ہو آپ رونے لگ جائیں گے مف میں رو رہے آپ کچھ نہیں ہو رہا ہے اس سے you're just feeling sorry for yourself feeling like a victim nobody feels sorry for you you understand what's the point of that and I said there's people on the 27th night they can't cry they try their best they can't cry and mashallah you're crying for free so instead of that do two things number one start reading the Quran with translation everybody should do this anyway and you will see that within a page or two, koi aisi baat mil jayegi waha, jiske opar aapko rona a jayega, now cry. And that will be beneficial crying. Barkati crying. Number two, if you can't do that, and you want to cry, just put your hands out to Allah and cry to Him in a dua, rather than wasting your crying doing nothing. The only person, that, the only one who can help you is Allah anyway, so cry to Allah. So channel your emotion, and you'll see that you'll do much better. Okay, that was number two. Number three. Let's take number three. 
another issue. Another issue that will affect a marriage and is affecting marriages is conjusi. Stinginess. Okay, now let's get this straight. Don't point at anybody. <clears throat> if the wife is stingy, I think that's a good thing. She won't do extra shopping. She can do, so it's good. It's okay. Right? I know some people, their wife likes to spend so much that they ask for itemized bill at the end of each month. Or they give them budget. However, if the man is stingy, then that's a problem. Because in Islam, I explained this in the other bayan, in Islam, my children, if they have their own money from ED or from gifts or from inheritance, unki apne paise, I can spend that on them. Unki khane ke liye, libas ke liye, and school fees, whatever, I can spend that. I don't have to spend my money on them. Most people spend their own money and they always go, but I have to say that I have to say that I have to say that I you can spend from that on the children, that's theirs. They can, you can spend it on them. In fact, if you want, I'm not giving ideas, but you can charge them for the room rent as well. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that for their needs, you can spend. Right? Your job is to look after them with their money if they have it. It's not necessary. However, with your wife, even if she's a millionaire, genuinely, if she's a millionaire, richer than you, you still have to spend on her food, clothing, and uh, living, living uh, boarding, uh, room, shelter. Your responsibility. Yes, if she wants to help, it's fine. But that, that's what it is. And what standard? The standard is based on both the husband and wife's social standing. So if, she, if her family spend from a certain, you know, they go to a certain type of low-end shops, that's all you have to do. You can do more if you want to. If they're from a high class, they only ship, uh, shop in these big malls, you know, then... So it's according to the urf and the custom of that family. It's just some fiqhi baate, just so that we understand. Now if the man is conduced, then uh, once I have a call from a woman, and she said, you know, my issue is that my husband is very, very stingy. Now, I said, give me example. He said, they're just about surviving. They're going to fall off any time. Things like this. So I said, let me talk to your husband. You have to confirm. Is your husband there? He said, yes. So then I asked, uh, talked to the husband. I said, what's the issue? He said, uh, I said, what about these cupboards? He said, they're surviving. Chalte hai. Chalte hai, they said. Right? So, the other uh, they had a lot of complaints, but one of them was that she became health conscious. So she wants organic milk. And he buys cheap, you know, regular milk. Organic milk costs maybe 50, 60 pennies more than normal milk. I said, I said, So I said to the husband separately, I said, look, let's make a hisab that if you bought organic milk instead of normal milk, how much milk do you use a week? He said, this much. I said, let's do the hisab in one year, how much more are you going to need? So it was about 70, 80, 100 pounds maximum. I said, come on. We'll talk about the cupboards later. Right? So kanjusi is a big thing. Kanjusi is like, we went to the restaurant to eat food. So when we to give money, we to I'm not giving ideas. I'm just saying this is just... So kanjusi for men is a problem in marriage. There's the Prophet ﷺ, I think the only place he allowed somebody to take somebody else's money without telling them 
was a wife from a husband. Now listen carefully here, and I don't want the women to take the wrong fatwa. Okay? But uh, Hind binti Abi Sufyan. Uh, no, Hind, uh, I forget her uh, other name, her father's name, but she is the wife of Abu Sufyan. Radiallahu anhu, bad me musliman ho gaye the. Pehle to wo adawat unki thi. So, he was very stingy. So she came and complained to the Prophet and the Prophet said, you can take as much as you genuinely, basically need. Okay, as I said, I'm not giving a fatwa. If your husband is stingy or nahi deta hai, to ask a mufti first, explain your karche and all of that, and then if he gives you ijazah, then you can do it. Otherwise, I don't want the men going from here and then, you know, their wives are going to start taking money from them. I don't want that to happen. So, you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, why am I discussing this? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created every single one of us with certain qualities and certain weaknesses or challenges. No two brothers are alike. You'll have a family of two, three brothers, two, three sisters. One of them is definitely going to be smarter than the others. One gets more angrier than the others. One is more passionate than the others. One is laid back, the other one is go get it. Very different. Even twins are very different. Uh, some people are inquisitive. Other people, they don't care. Right? So now our job is to find out what our strengths are and use them in the right way and understand our weaknesses and control them. Otherwise, we're losers in this world. And remember, Allah has given every single person capabilities and some weaknesses. So, you might be very smart, very good speaker, but you might be very stingy. So, mashallah, use your ability to speak and uh, smartness in the right way and sort out your uh, stinginess. You understand? Everybody has a different combination. Tell me how many of us here, genuinely, uh, I want a reaction, how many of you have discovered at least one weakness and one strength in you? Just one. Okay. It's very important, otherwise the rest of you are losers. If you don't, so you better. I mean, if you're surviving and mashallah, you know, you're doing well, you've discovered it. Have you discovered your weaknesses as well? People are bothered by it, but you maybe just ignore it. It's also important to be a good human being with good akhlaq to recognize your weaknesses. Very important. So that's why I said, you might have one of these problems. Okay, let's move on now. But you understand what This is important. The next one, let's just say the person is too obsessed with uh, cricket, or YouTube, or Facebook, or his work, or doing Uber, anything. All right? It's 20 hours and wo bichari pareshani pareshan hokar baith rahi hai or he's too much into his friends so he's got married now kaam pe jata hai comes back and then goes out to his friends and she's waiting with the food until 12 o'clock at night and she's fallen asleep on the dastarkhan or on the table and then you come back later and you've already eaten with your friends that's a problem you need to invest in this or you're too much into your family so, jab bhi mokha ho, to apne ghar chali gai. And you just about come here, like some hotel or something. That's a problem. You have to invest until you're on the road. Then after that, you can decide what to do. Even with us ulama, if you're very research-oriented, aap apne kitabo ke piche lage hoye hote hai, you could also be neglecting. It can happen in any, anything you're obsessed about. Anybody like that, obsessed about something that is affecting their marriage? You don't have to tell me. But it's something to think about. I just want this to be a reflective session. Because if your marriages are messed up, your life is messed up. You're not getting the emotional fulfillment. And if you don't have emotional fulfillment, and your marriage is messed up, your household is messed up. And that, your, that means the children are being brought up in an unstable environment. Then they grow up to have different problems because they didn't get the full good experience. That's why sort it out. Don't leave it for too long. Because 
aaj ek problem and you didn't sort it out i mean there will be problems by the way you you know don't get fixated on every small problem there will be problems but i have a small problem and you didn't do anything and it bothers you at night but you're just not doing anything about it you have another problem because problems come your two individuals issues will come about then you get another problem and another problem so when i'm dealing with these old marriages there's too many problems to sort out 20 problems think of it this way for those who can see when you have a problem you go down another problem you go down further so you go distant from one another you have to climb out of this ditch to meet together again so if you just have one problem it's easy to climb out if you have 20 problems and you've gone 10 meters down what can say up nickling in wahase and get back together think of it that way how deep is your problem think of it that way how deep are your problems okay we have some people mashallah amazing people they are never wrong there's some people who are always right they never make mistakes they always have the best opinion they always right right have you seen those people you've never seen one there's a lot huh bangalore mein kitne hai aise bangalore is a very special city so you must have a lot of really perfect people that never make mistakes in their life right huh no no there's some people who never make mistakes ask them they never make mistakes they're always right you didn't know that is there anybody like that here i'm looking for this person because i i maine puri duniya mein pucha aur mujhe kahin nahi mila i'm hoping ke bangalore mein koi aisa fard mil jaye that never makes mistakes oh mashallah mashallah okay jazakallah karti kal ke duniya mein mashallah theek hai okay let's carry on then the problem is that i get call sometimes from the husband or the wife usually from the wife my husband is like this or my father is like this or my mother is like this i said theek hai that's fine i said look if you can't deal they've been trying to deal with it I said okay tell your father tell his father no he doesn't listen to him I said tell your father he doesn't listen to him. tell the local imam he doesn't listen to anyone he's always right he doesn't no he says you do what you want I'm right nobody can tell me so what are these people aren't they always right and none of you said that that was possible our uh, mashallah our chacha there he said that adam ali sam came so where are these people coming from then that people are bringing complaint to me you, you know what i'm saying the, these are narcissistic people modern world, word for it is narcissism they think they're right all the time any narcissist here huh? well anyway i've told you the description if it meets if it's you then you're a narcissist you better sort yourself out otherwise you are giving a lot of pareshani beautiful word pareshani right no word like that in english It's just pareshan right you're giving pareshani to your family and you don't realize it because everybody has to just walk on eggshells while they're around you because kuch ho gaya that's it you blow your top mai saaf saaf baat karne ke liye because these are the issues if you have these issues your families are messed up your community is messed up and then the muslim ummah is messed up it has to start at home and then your children are unstable we're growing children that are messed up and that's wrong psychologically children need both their father and mother there's a lot of research especially in girls that a father has to be involved that some of the studies show even a biological effect that girls whose fathers are hardly ever there either because she's a single mother or because talaq ho gayi ya ye ke wo aisa itna kaam karta hai ki he's never there they will start their period sooner another problem with this is they will be more prone to grooming because they're looking for a father figure jo ghar mein nahi mila they're looking for a father figure 
کوئی اس کی تعریف کرے گا اس کو کچھ کیئر یو نو سم شو دیم سم پریز اینڈ کمفرٹ دل دل بی ریڈی ٹو گو دے سائیکولوجیکلی چلڈرن نیڈ بوف دا فادر اینڈ مدر اینڈ اسٹیبل ریلیشن شپ دس وائی وی یوزلی سی سم پیپل سی دیٹ دا چلڈرن آر موسٹ امپورٹنٹ ان اے فیملی آئی بلیو دا ہسبینڈ اینڈ وائف آر موسٹ امپورٹنٹ ان اے فیملی بیکاز اف دے آر سوٹیڈ ان شاء اللہ اف دے آن دا سیم ویو لینتھ دا چلڈرن ول بی فائن سو یو انڈرسٹینڈ ناؤ And then there's worse nowadays. The husband, I'll say this in, uh, in veiled language, because we've got bachche here. The wife is waiting in bed, and the husband is in another room on a laptop. And this is a major issue. He's doing his spreadsheets on the laptop. He's so involved in his work that he's doing his spreadsheets. Right? So, These are big issues. Now, we don't have too much time, but uh, some people, they come and ask, can you tell me the basic response, uh, uh, obligations of marriage? Yeah, nikah ke faraiz kya hai? Hame namaz ke faraiz bata do. I'll tell you the namaz ke faraiz. Who knows the namaz ke faraiz? Anybody? Yeah, go on. نماز کے فرائض اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر کہہ دیا پھر پتہ نہیں کہاں ہاتھ چھوڑیں گے اس لیے کہ وہ فرض نہیں ہے ہاتھ باندھنا فرض نہیں ہے اللہ اکبر کھڑے کھڑے اللہ اکبر ایک آیت الحمد للہ رب العالمین یا کل ہو اللہ احد اینی آیت فرض ادا ہو گیا تھوڑی دیر کھڑے ہو گئے کل ہو اللہ احد رکو یو ڈونٹ نیڈ ٹو ریڈ اینی تھنگ سجدہ ٹو سجداز اینڈ دین سٹ فار دا ٹائم اٹ ٹیکس ٹو ڈو تشاہ دیٹس دا فرد Salam is not fard either. Wo wajib hai. Now imagine if somebody does namaz like that. Hum kya kehenge aisi namaz ko? That's not a namaz. Uske saath hum wajib ko bhi ada karte hain. Aur usme jo sunnat hai, wo bhi ada karte hain. Durush sharif is sunnat. But we do it. Nobody misses that out. First salam is wajib. Second salam is sunnat. Do you ever see somebody doing one salam? Not in India. If you go to West Africa, وہ نماز ختم کریں گے اور پھر ایسے ہی سامنے دیکھتے ہوئے اسے السلام علیکم اینڈ ول ووک اوے وائی ڈی ڈوئنگ دیٹ سم مالکی مذہب سلام سامنے ون سلام اور صرف السلام علیکم یو کین تھنک یہ کیا کر رہا ہے اس کو نماز پڑھنے نہیں آتی ہے جسٹ تھنگ یو جسٹ تھنک یو ایو سی دس انڈیا میں تو آئی ڈونٹ تھنک اینی مالکیز دس سم شافیز بٹ دس نو مالکیز سو The namaz is not anything with just the fard. So that's why people who say, what's my obligation in marriage? And that's all you're going to focus on. You're going to have a very dry, ugly marriage. Surviving, just surviving. Farz ada ho gaya bas. That's not a marriage. Marriage is based on love and emotional fulfillment. So what you need now is you need a, for a successful marriage, you need a love bank account. How many of you have a love bank account? Any of you signed up for a love bank account in your, for your marriage? Come on, kisi ke baas to ho? You're such a tech-savvy people and you don't even have a love bank account? Nobody? Okay, well, I'll promote it today in the masjid. Yek bada zabardas account hai. Right? And inshallah, I'll make a lot of profit. So this is a business venture for the Akhirat, inshallah. Right? So it's allowed. I can't make business in the masjid otherwise. So a love bank account is that if I do anything extra beyond the expectation for my wife, I've deposited into the love bank account. Ek balance dal raho mein. For example, if I bought her flowers. I don't buy her flowers, but if I one day went and bought her flowers, she'd think, mashallah. Um, so now I did that and I made some tea for her. I, I make my wife's tea twice a day. English tea, not Indian tea. That's the little khidmat I do. Tarheeb dera aapko. Right? You don't have to if you don't want to. Right? But uh, let's just say that I made her something. Tomorrow, if we have a little misunderstanding and argument, 
shaitan will try to make it sound worse oh he hates me he's probably interested in that girl at work he is like this he's like that wo shaitan aake bahut sara paranoia you know he's paranoid they make you however if you have a love bank balance she's going to think no 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 kal to he bought me flowers he can't be hating me you understand so she will take from the balance phir aapko aur banna padega usme the wife should do the same thing husband and wife should do the same anything extra that's what this relationship is based on love so you have to find the beauty of each in other akhlaq and everything else the balance there must be some beauty in your husband in the husband and wife some beauty if not facial beauty must be something else koi akhlaqi beauty kindness empathy compassion kuch na kuch to hoga come on as i said to you before allah has not created anybody without any qualities har aadmi mein qualities hai aur kuch weaknesses hai if you focus on the weaknesses you won't see the qualities the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that you should not hate a woman your wife if you are not satisfied with one quality there's other things you should be satisfied with just you have to look at things holistically you can never have perfection there is no perfect person but how can you have a perfect wife or a per- perfect husband you can't it's impossible it's you get you do the best and then you keep reading the dua rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyyatina qurrata a'yun waj'alna lil muttaqina imama our lord grant us give us from our spouses so husband can read it for the wife wife can read it for the husband and from our children and descendants puri sab ke liye dua hai those that will become the joy of my sight the ulama mentioned that yes he powerful dua hai that if you read this then aapke uh, partner mein yani your husband or wife unke andar kuch jo khamiya hai ya to wo khatam ho jayegi or they won't bother you anymore your focus will become something else and they won't bother you anymore i'm telling you this this uh, you know you can do this with anybody if you want to focus on the negatives you can if you're a negative person you're going to be in trouble so love bank balance now in love bank balance you have to so everybody knows the account now right to abhi aap kal se aaj se hi shuru kar do now be careful i gave example of flowers so one person came to me after one bayan he said sheikh i want to tell you that once i bought my wife flowers and she got so angry that what kind of flowers did you buy me i said i don't blame her aapne bas kuch koi bhi flowers aise hi kheench liye kahin se she likes flowers she knows flowers then you have to give some thought if you go and buy flowers the same old flowers every friday and give it to her she's going to be tired of that that's not love bank balance you have to uh, put kuch uh, you know you have to put some love and think thought in it like i'm willing to think about you and i'll buy you different flowers and it's not only flowers you can buy whatever she want you know whatever you think she's going to like it's about the thought and the surprise factor you also can't like eat ke din apne bada hadiya de diya aur uske baad phir so it's like you know do we have any dentist here koi dentist hai ya उनसे मुझे फतवा पूछना है डेंटल फतवा एनी बॉडी तो आप लोग कहाँ जाते हैं जब दांत का मसला हो यहाँ कोई डेंटिस्ट ही नहीं ओके ठीक है ओह दे स्केड आई माइट या योर फादर इज ए डेंटिस्ट योर मदर इज ए माशा ओके आस्क हर दिस क्वेश्चन ओके इफ सम बट यू नो एवरी डे यू है यू हैव टू ब्रश योर थी समटाइम्स ट्वाइस अ डे सो इट्स अ बिट ऑफ अ हैसल टू ब्रश योर थी एवरी डे So if on Sunday I brush my teeth for half an hour then do not have to do it for the rest of the week. A dentist ka bachcha you should know. What do you think? Yeah but I did it for half an hour. Half an hour then I don't have to do it for 7 days. Just ask your mom, okay? you shouldn't do that by the way yeah is ka koi you know it a bit small bit exactly it's it'll be harmful for you exactly yeah but in this case it won't be harmful in this case 
the hadiyah, it won't be uh, harmful, but do bit by bit. Why do you need to do this? Why do you need to do this? The reason you need to do this is because you owe it to your future generations. So now, let me ask somebody, how uh, many grandchildren are you? Five grandchildren. What's your name? Muhammad Mushtaq, sahab, Allah bless him. Given long life on Iman. He has five grandchildren. They're yours. They're not your brothers or sisters. They have their own. Right. Now you know the five you have, there's no stopping now. They're going to become 10, 15, 20. Then we're going to be gone from this world. Or Bas, mashallah, they'll just continue. Right? Now the thing is that whatever the way your household is, that will influence your children and your grandchildren. If you have a good sifat, they will carry that on. On the day of judgment, you will come with all of your grandchildren. If our dua has been accepted, then inshallah, all of them will be the coolness of our eyes. Some, there's going to be some woman and say, Who is this? This is your great, great, great granddaughter. And mashallah, look at what she did because you left behind the good environment that mashallah, usme o palebare. Very important. Marek Doste, he's very wealthy and he's in a position of influence but he's a very religious man and he thinks. Usne waqf banaya hai. And I think the Muslim community needs to make more waqf. Our elders, past predecessors have made waqf and left it. We need to make waqf. Waqf means if you have a lot of assets, you can leave some fee sabirillah. A waqf has a deed. Okay, waqf ke ek deed hoti hai to how it is governed. And you have mutawallis of the waqf. So he, he has defined his waqf ke ye ye kaam karegi, ye khidmat anjaam degi. Or merry family, yani children, grandchildren, they will work in it. Taki unko bhi sawab mile. Yaha tak usne socha hai ke unke liye ek awrad, ye wazaif ki kitab tayar ki hai ke jo bhi is waqf mein kaam karega, he needs to read these duas. Because they're very powerful duas. Look how far he's thinking. Now imagine after 200 years, he's gone. And the, that waqf is continuing. And his great-great-great-grandchildren who he's never seen, that grandchild is going to take that great-great-grandfather's kitab and think, MashaAllah. Look at the sunnah he established. Look at the reward he's going to get. Did you ever think that you are the head of a legacy? You know, when you have children, grandchildren and so on, did you ever think that you're ahead of a legacy? And what you do today is going to affect that. Some people, they ask me that, why did you choose this uh, occupation? You know, alim banna, ye karna, wo karna. So, pehle mein ye jawab deta tha, ki my father's an alim and, ka, haf, uh, alim and hafiz, his brother's a hafiz, my chacha, his father was a hafiz. My mum's father is a qari and a half is rahimahumullah. Uh, her brother's a mufti. It runs in the family. Big deal. Like it runs in the family. How can you affect that? How is it fayda for you? Then I realized that the main reason is because in our house, see there's lots of people who have doctors in the family and they don't want to be a doctor. Or there's a certain business and the child doesn't want to take that business and want to do some other business. It can happen, right? So the reason I wanted to carry on this tradition is because I saw that the deen was glorified in my house. The deen was always respected and honored. And people who did hivs or ilm or whatever, they were respected. I thought, Chalo, that's a good thing. You know, this is honorable. However, the main thing is a lot of people will listen to this. They say, in our no alim, no hafiz, where they just about pray namaz. Okay, no problem. Does that mean you have to carry that on? Does that mean you have to carry the same tradition on? Can you not make all of, if you can't, then can you not make your children all half is an alim? In England, alhamdulillah, we have so many now families, all of their children are half is alim or alima, and they also got degrees. So many. There's one family I know, one may half is alim neitha. Right? And one. They started and now every single second generation, nearly everyone is Hafiz. 
You can start the tradition. It's in your hands. It's going to be your children and grandchildren. You know, sometimes uh, when I've been for Hajj, the Hajj me for two weeks, one week, two weeks, you are with somebody, some stranger, and you get to understand them. Some people, they will stick out for bad akhlaq, and some people will stick out for good akhlaq. MashaAllah, this guy is just a really good guy. Look at his akhlaq. So then you wonder, kaha se akhlaq hai? What, and I get speak, I start speaking to them and I realize they'll tell me that oh my great grandfather oh yeah koi bara buzurg the and you know I thought so I thought so you can change the course of the history of your generations it's your responsibility in fact don't be selfish and just think about yourself why would you want in thirty years that your marriage may be punctured with a divorce and your children will be all over the place. Or your children experience animosity and aggression and arguments. Why would you put your children through that? They're going to do the same thing with their children. How many mother-in-laws are there who oppress their daughter-in-laws and the reason they do it is because their mother-in-law oppressed them. Their mother-in-law oppressed them so then they oppress their daughter-in-laws. Stop the su bad sunnah. You be good. You'll get rewarded so you can teach your daughter-in-law something good. You don't have to carry on the trend. This is what the problem is. This is our messing up our community. Change the culture. Take the good and leave the bad. Every Muslim culture has good and bad in it. Take the good, leave the bad. A lot of the time is misunderstanding. For example, in the north of England, uh, London, London has hard water. And if you have hard water, it leaves lime scale marks, white, white marks. Have you noticed that? So, a girl from another town where the water is softer got married in London. Now, you know the bathtub. In where she comes from, they just wash it and leave it. It's clean. But here, the mother-in-law, because there's lime scales, she wipes the bathtub. So there's no... The water does not leave a residue. She never taught that to her daughter-in-law. She just expects her to know. This is the problem. There's misunderstanding, miscommunication. So when she doesn't do it properly, you know what she says? She says, didn't your mother teach you anything? Foreign mark yo parchari jati hai. Is that fair? Like, do, you, do you want her to do the work? You do it and say, look, you know, here the water is hard. That's why we wipe it. But she doesn't know that the water is not hard somewhere else. So maybe that's the confusion. But she just tell him. But no, aapki maan ne kuch nahi sikhaya. Usko biryani banane ke liye kaha. And she cooked it differently because there's multiple ways of biryani, isn't there? Main Australia mein atikaf mein tha. To waha, mashallah, saat din mein har din mukhtalif kisam ki biryani. Bombay biryani, Bangalore biryani, Hyderabad biryani, Gujarati biryani, and I can't remember the rest. So she makes biryani differently and kacche gosh ki biryani, pakke gosh ki biryani, patani, I don't know, right? So this mother-in-law says, didn't your mom even teach you how to cook? Why do you have to blame her mom for? It's different style. Or maybe she's just weak, she doesn't know. But I will say that uh, make sure that our daughters learn how to cook food, not just bake. Abhi, what we've seen in a lot of uh, profiles is uh, she loves baking. No problem. Make sure you know how to cook at least 10 Indian dishes. Not just pizza and pasta. Right? Her rose pasta kilaegi. This one girl, she's going to get married. She says, I don't need to learn how to cook. I said, why? I said, because one friend of mine, the husband cooks. And the other one, her mother-in-law just cooks. I said, listen, don't be misguided by this. You need to learn how to cook. Right? Don't expect that you're going to find a husband who knows how to cook and wants to cook. But I don't know why he's cooking, to be honest. Right? And if he likes to cook, no problem. It's fine. Usko wo chef hai to pakao. No problem. Spoil your wife. Right? And are you going to find a mother-in-law who's going to want to cook? You know? So that's why we need to train our children. And our boys, they, get, they, they sometimes uh, we focus a lot on our women, our girls. And we don't focus on our sons. They, azadi se wo gumte pirte hai. They don't know how to pay a bill. But fix a little tap. 
or tighten a screw. We need to teach them. They don't know how to invite mehman in. Or mehman aya, they don't know what they're doing. They're on their phone. All of these things have to be taught so that they're ready for marriage. So chalo, lambi baat ho our time is up. Chalo, mashallah, bohat achcha wakt ho gaya. Yeah. Yeah, you're going. Okay, mashallah, mashallah. Jazakallah. I was looking for that fatwa, jazakallah for the fatwa. Yeah. G? It's fine, it's, fine. it's good, mashallah. Samne betai, jawab de rai, he's awake. It's wonderful, man. For children to be not sleeping. It's wonderful, mashallah. Allah bless them. Very difficult to talk to all members of society and make it relevant. So maaf karna if it was not relevant for you. But hopefully this is useful ke ye ek sochne ka tariqa hai ke kis tarah hamari marriages ko any relationship where this affects workspace relationship. Same kind of if you're sensitive you're gonna have a problem. If you get angry quickly in a workspace you're gonna have a problem. You understand? If you're occupied by your phone all the time you're gonna have a problem at work. Right? Because you need to be productive. It works everywhere. So it's just a way to think that what is it that's going to affect and prepare like that. And if you're already married, then you will know that it's already messing up your marriage. So correct. Go and get help. Go and get help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. Allah enhance our relationships, especially our marriage. Give us khush kawar zindagi. Make it hayat and tayyibah. That's fine. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that for us. Jazakallah khair for listening. Allah bless you all. Please keep us in your duas as well. And inshallah we'll see you another time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dua after Adam. Azan ke baad dua. Inshallah. Azan ke baad dua raha hui. Tashif rakhe. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we ask you for your special mercies on this congregation. Ya Allah, accept our coming here. Ya Allah, we ask you for your generosity and your benevolence and your mercy. We ask you for your forgiveness. O oh Allah, we ask you for your forgiveness. O oh Allah, forgive us our laziness. Forgive us our distractions. Forgive us our other occupations. O oh Allah, forgive us our sins and transgressions. O oh Allah, forgive our violations. O oh Allah, we ask you to forgive those sins that bring darkness to our lives. We ask you to forgive those sins that bring darkness to our relationships. O oh Allah, that remove the barakah and blessing from them. O oh Allah, that have, that have taken the happiness out of our lives. O oh Allah, we ask you forgiveness from all of these sins. O oh Allah, we ask that you forgive us those sins that we have now brought into our life. They've become part of our life and we don't consider them sins anymore. O oh Allah, if we die in this state, what will become of us? O oh Allah, allow us full purification before we die. O oh Allah, we ask that you bless our marriages. You bless our relationships. O oh Allah, you make us those people who understand their strengths and use them positively and those who understand their weakness and control their weaknesses. O oh Allah, we ask that you remove our weaknesses, you remove our laziness, you remove our inattentiveness, you remove the non-concern and selfishness that we have. O oh Allah, make us better individuals and better people. O oh Allah, make us like the, a breath of fresh air rather than a liability. O oh Allah, make us productive individuals. O oh Allah, bless our marriages, make them our homes wonderful, blissful environments. O oh Allah, grant us wonderful children and progeny until the day of judgment. Make them the coolness of our eyes. 
O oh Allah, make them the coolness of our eyes. Protect us from any evil related to them. Protect us from the challenges that the new world puts in front of us. Protect us from all the fitnas that seek to take away our children and us from the straight path. O oh Allah, we ask that you give us full yaqeen in the message of your messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Attach us with the Qur'an, attach us to the Qur'an. O oh Allah, all these brothers and sisters who are sitting here on this Sunday evening, O oh Allah, bless and accept all of them. O oh Allah, you uh, brought us here. You chose to bring us here. O oh Allah, we didn't just come here. But, O oh Allah, you thought us worthy to come here. O oh Allah, now make us worthy of having good relationships and a good communication with you and a good ibadah and good relationship with you and good sunnah of your Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O oh Allah, all of those who have allowed this journey to happen and this timetable to be made and have worked very hard and given a lot of sacrifice in any way, shape or form to have these programs, O oh Allah, accept it from them. And O oh Allah, forgive us our mistakes. But O oh Allah, accept it from them and make this a form of sadaqa jariyah. Make it useful and beneficial. O oh Allah, allow these words to be accepted by you. Allow it to be beneficial and improve our communities and our marriages. Those who are married here, O oh Allah, bless their marriages, enhance their marriages. Make them blissful ones. And O oh Allah, those who are not married, grant them pious, righteous, suitable partners. And O oh Allah, give us blessing and allow us to unite together in Jannat al-Firdaus. Allow us to unite together in Jannat al-Firdaus. O oh Allah, accept from us and bless all the people of Bangalore. And O oh Allah, bless all of the people of Hindustan, of India. And O oh Allah, allow the, allow the state of affairs to become more positive and better. And O oh Allah, remove any darknesses and the dark clouds which are looming against us. And O oh Allah, remove the fitnas and trials and tribulations. Allow us to be successful. O oh Allah, grant us an understanding how we can be useful people to all other people. And O oh Allah, how to be productive and accept us all for the service of your deen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. May tamam shahriyan e Bangalore ki janib se Hadrat Mufti sahab ka mamnoon wa mashkoor hoon ke aapne hamare se